I wish that knowledge later, later. Children, grandchildren, other family members, pastors and ministers, Spirit of the Lord Church family, and I also want to acknowledge all of our brothers and sisters. I bring you greetings this morning. Please accept condolences from me and my family on the passing of Pastor Joe. Also, for the Jamaican Foursquare Church, I give condolences as well. We see Pastor Joe as part of our church, and I, we see ourselves as an extension of his own church. Uh, he's visited with us and preached in our church at least three times. And on his second visit, or on his last visit to Jamaica, he brought Sister Layla. Now, bringing Sister Layla to Jamaica meant that the deal was sealed. We were formally extended church family members. Jonathan, there is still an appointment for you here in Jamaica. Pastor Joe always said that he was going to send you over. And so we just want to know that if the Lord ever leads you down that pathway, that we would be more than happy to welcome you. And so I'm going to let the Lord lead you for sure. Uh, for me, it is such an honor to be bringing the message today uh, in the celebration of life for Pastor Joe, a uh, man of God, a servant of the Most High God, indeed, uh, an honorable man. And so it is my desire that as part of looking through um, who he was and what he's done, um, by making reference in the word, I also want to be able to express my own personal gratitude uh, to the family, uh, both the immediate family and the extended church family. When, when my family and I were living in Minnesota, all took care of us in an excellent way. And so I want to say to Stalela, thank you so much. The, um, if you would just receive that on behalf of Pastor Joe for us, we love and appreciate all of you in that. And so my task today is to really sing his praise and to honor his memory. I'm truly grateful. Can I say that I am regretful that I can't be with you physically. Uh, my heart is there. My, my complete heart is there wanting to be in your presence this morning in this celebration. And even as I bring this message, I desire so much to have been physically there. Nevertheless, I want to thank you for accommodating me and allowing me to participate through this medium. So to what we will do here then is jump into the scriptures where I would hope to highlight some fundamental ideas with respect to our Christian walk or this journey of faith. One that um, as we watch Pastor Joel's life, we saw very clear evidence of true witness of this walk of faith. And so we want to talk the, uh, about that this morning and encourage our hearts as we are left behind to continue on in this journey. So having established that, let me invite you to look with me to the text in Hebrews chapter 12 and just the first verse. And it reads, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. If I were to use as a simple theme this morning, it would be enduring to the end. Again, enduring to the end. And my scripture was read from the New King James Version. So just come with me as we unpack for a little bit some of the truths of, of this text that will encourage and strengthen our hearts in this moment. Now, the backdrop of this text sees the author presenting Jesus Christ as the great and ultimate sacrifice for sin. And that's all sin, man's sin. And that his sacrifice satisfies all the demands for complete redemption of human race. We believe as the body of Christ that in Jesus Christ, what he did on Calvary was sufficient and adequate. And that any man, any woman who comes to Jesus Christ 
will will be complete um, the redeemed and that there's no need for additional salvation. As the Son of God, therefore, his willingness to submit to this, that process uh, that made him suitable and a uh, suitable sacrificial offering to bring in or bring about the new covenant that was spoken of in Scripture. This new covenant was to replace the old ceremonial covenant that failed to remove the sin of or the stain of sin, that permanent stain of sin. Since once yearly during on the day of atonement, the priest had to make sacrifice again for all the sins that were so it was quite imperfect. But in Jesus Christ, we know that all our sins are forgiven. He washes away all our sins and cleanses us, bringing us into this new place of relationship and this new covenant. The new covenant comes through Jesus Christ, unlike the old. It is written in our hearts. So no longer it is, is it uh, just an experience that we have, but it is a it, it touches the depths of our being. So here are the two significant implications of that truth for all believers. One is that redemption is no longer an external encounter, but a deep inward spiritual transformation. Those who encounter Christ, you are never the same. You are transformed forever. And two, that Jesus Christ reigns in our lives through the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, he directly influences our consciousness. Uh, he guides and he's involved in our daily living and the way we live this Christian walk. Holy Spirit convicts, he directs, and he guides indeed. Amen. Those who accept and follow in obedience his word will one day, one day, receive the reward for their steadfast faith. In other words, those who stay the course will in due season reap uh, if they faint not. So this notion of one day references a time in the future. Speaking of a future time acknowledges then that we will at some point come to the end of a journey. Uh, this journey we know today is the journey of life here on earth. So in the case of Pastor Joe, we are saying his life here on earth has ended. But when speaking of our faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible often refers to the journey of life as a military battle or as an athletic endeavor. In that, you, you get the sense that if it's a battle, there has to be preparation, there has to be engagement, and there is going to be an outcome. There is uh, entanglement or, 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 or embattlement that results in some kind of outcome, whether positive or negative. But for the believer, it is that this battle means that we must win, but, but, but we're constantly minded of how we carry ourselves and how we engage. The other analogies of a race that the believer must win. You, you, you find in scripture this, this idea very often uh, shared and taught. This is specifically true of the author in Hebrew, uh, 12 verse 1, that he, we're, he made, uh, he or she made uh, a metaphorical reference uh, to a race, the race of the type held and in an amphitheater found in ancient Greece. Uh, through their testimonies of keeping faith in the Lord Jesus. The supporters whom the scripture refers to um, were in stands and, and, and they're described as shouting and cheering. They're cheering on uh, those who are coming. See, it is understood that those who are in the stand are those who have made it successfully to the finish line of their life journey of faith and they ran well and so they are able to serve as cheerleaders for those who must complete the task. They are support for us. And so they provide the needed encouragement, if you will, as we look at their stories and their testimonies. We are encouraged so that we too can make it. Every believer, every single child of God must anticipate the day when they make this transition. Noting that the race is still in progress then for those who remain. Those who have died, uh, they've come to the end. But those who are alive and continue to live for Jesus, they are still in this race. And so the author instructs the believers that they must address their 
thoughts, their attitudes, and their way of life in such a way that it doesn't hinder them from making it to the finishing line. It's important that they get to the line. You went to the race so that you can get to the finishing line. They must make the decision that he implores, that they must make the decision to endure. It is noteworthy that the previous list of things, that is their thoughts, their attitudes, and their way of life, that it, 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 all of those things are within the realm of human control. In other words, I have a, a measure of control over my thoughts or the kinds of things that, that I think about or continue to focus on. And that the kind of attitude that I exhibit, those are within my domain and the way I live my life. Those are, I'm kind of in control of them so I can guard my eye gates to protect myself. I can guard my ears so that I can protect my, my spirit. I can guard my, 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 my ever being so that I, I'm, 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 I'm protecting what it is that gets in and out of me. Hallelujah. And so I am in control. However, when it comes on to endurance, that requires that no matter what comes, it does not say based on the things you can manipulate or control. It does suggest that where there are things that you can't predetermine, where there are things that are unchangeable, in other words, you are unable to change, and the things that you're unable to avoid, that whatever those things are, you must still continue. There is a persistence. There is a, a staying of the course. So rather than stepping back and throwing our hands up, we're able to make it. So implicit in the text is the idea that on this journey of faith, one will encounter, one will necessarily encounter hardship. It is paved or characterized by afflictions and, and sometimes sicknesses and sufferings and disappointments and loss and death or any other major catastrophic type event may present itself on this pathway. And the goal and the purpose and the intent of these events are to dissuade, derail, or to make the believer wary. And so the believer has to anticipate, has to be prepared to meet because these are all real part of the journey. I know in our 21st century uh, messages that we very seldomly focus on the fact that there is suffering in the journey of faith, that suffering is a part of that. The point to highlight here is that there is a deliberate effort by the enemy to prevent the believer from reaching the finish line or to cause uh, the believer not to finish. And so returning to the race metaphor, the impression from the text is that the spiritual race is not about speed, that that's not the greatest importance, it rather is about endurance. However, Speed, if you talk to people like Usain Bolt, my own countryman, he will attest to the value of speed in a race, particularly when you're running a sprint race. It is, it's important that once you hear that, God, you are able to make it quickly to the finishing line. But in contrast, that's not the kind of race that we're running in this faith uh, walk and in this faith journey, that it is characterized more as a marathon. A marathon requires uh, more strength and more muscular development in order to maintain. In fact, speed is diminished. It's not the most vital um, factor in running a marathon. So you, you, in order to sustain the journey, in order to stay the course, there is is the need for endurance. And endurance then allows the runner to complete a marathon. Endurance is the ability to keep on going towards the finish line, even though you are experiencing great pain, agony, and fatigue in the muscles or cardiovascular um, system. If, talk, if we translate that into spiritual understanding, we're saying irrespective of what comes in our lives, how difficult life will become, how painful life might become, how disappointing experiences might be, that we are able to stay the course. We endure, we persevere, we press through and we make it in the spiritual race of which the author speaks, then when one finishes is less important because speed and time is not of the essence, but that 
the individual actually finishes his paramount. It is important that you get to that finish line because that's the battle. It's either you make it or you don't make it. So thus crossing the line or the finishing line versus not crossing the finishing line is the crux of the matter as being presented here. The believer must then take care to ensure that the right discipline in order to ensure that you make it across the line, the responsibility is yours as we think about endurance, to develop a discipline that is going to assist you. It's the, it's the training, it's the way of life, it's the, it's the preparation that is necessary to allow you to go through every trial, every persecution and still stand the test. You see, it's all well and good that we start the journey, but if we don't finish the journey, then we would have missed out on the prize and the promise that comes with the, 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 the message of salvation that is spoken of here in the scripture. So this implied contrast suggests that it is possible for some, and we know, we have seen, we have heard of those who have started this journey, but they have not finished and they have not finished well. Oh God, I pray that today you will be running well and that you will not have to worry about finishing well. The discipline developed in the believer uh, creates room for others around to experience the transformation that is taking place in the believer's life. So we are saying that as you are being shaped, as you are preparing yourself for endurance, this is not just a, uh, an individual kind of, of, of experience, that those who are around you will be impacted, will be affected. And that is true of Pastor Joel on his own journey. In a little bit, we will talk about that. But how does one uh, necessarily get to the end of the line? And the scripture tells us in verse 2 of chapter 12, and I'll read that for you. It says, looking unto Jesus, there is a focus on Jesus. Jesus uh, as the center of our life, Jesus as the main director of our life, Jesus as the source of our life. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Uh, see, he modeled for us what it means to endure suffering, despising the shame, whatever comes, and has sat down now at the right hand of um right hand of the throne of God. And so he, he, he got to the end and, and, and he's now exalted in the much the same way that is expected that we the believers who are walking here in this journey or running in this race, that we will make it. So the, the, the life completely focused on Jesus manifests two solid understandings. One is that Jesus Christ determines the course of the believer's life. If the life is focused on Jesus, it is Jesus who directs, not you, the individual. In other words, I can't just do any old thing and do what I want. I literally have to submit to his will. And so he writes all the experiences. If he writes the experiences, whether it be bad or good, he is in total control. So I have to trust and I can trust that God has everything about my life in control. And even when I don't understand my experience, when I cannot make sense of my negative experiences, and when I can't see a door opening for joy and happiness to come, I have to be able to trust that the Lord is in full control. That's the life focus. So according to Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So knowing this makes every bad experience meaningful and useful. This leads to a clear sense of peace that keeps the believer's heart, no matter what he's facing. And the second uh understanding is that Jesus Christ is the totality of the believer's faith. Is What does that mean? He is the beginning and the ending. He will see us through to the end. He is committed to helping us and to enabling us. All that we need is in him. He, he's our full source. Uh, everything that the believer desires and needs for this race, he has given us and he continues to provide. And we will receive a just reward when we make it to the end. So that's also the promise that he will do. He grants us the strength and supplies all of our needs. So both things are true on this journey. 
Now, when, oh, how those apply or, 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 or are manifested in, 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 in Pastor Joe's life, and now I will try to highlight and reflect upon his own journey. I tell you about the man that I know that we're celebrating here today. I would say that Pastor Joe, he was well, he was able to empower others. I'm thinking of my own life when I got to Minnesota and I walked into church that morning and, and, and saw Brad Peglo and started talking to him just about becoming a student and I, uh, that I'm a student and that I, I have come over to study and I'm from Jamaica and things of that sort. After speaking with him for a few minutes, he, he then took me in to speak with Pastor Joe. And, and after about 10 minutes of speaking, Pastor Joe's response was, brother man, relax, get settled, get your family settled because in about six months, we will start hearing from you. In other words, it calls us to mind that there is expectation as a man of God, you are here even as a student, but then you will have to um, be, be used by God here. Um, that's very, very important for, for, for me, you know, in, in, in giving me the release. And then he also honors others. Every time we travel to Jamaica, whenever the president, he came and stuff, he knew uh, that Little is much when God is in it. And so even though he didn't have much, and he said it to me, that's like, oh, in America, I might not have a lot of money, or from America's perspective, I might not have a lot of money. But I do know that when you go over into other um, economic um, jurisdiction, that, that money might be different. And so he put together whatever he could, and he blessed the servant of God, uh, honoring and respecting. Oh my God, that's a transformation, a transformed life for someone who used to be on the streets and didn't know Jesus. And then now he's selfless in serving others. In other words, he will go extra mile to make sure that you as an individual, your needs are met. I know, I know that. He helped me when I was there in Minnesota. Helped me move, helped me get back and forth. There were things that I did. And then oftentimes he was serving throughout the week. He served people in the community and ensured that their needs are met. He, he wasn't even worried about trying to get in the pulpit because he knew that he, the worth, his worth was measured by how many times he was in the pulpit, but rather the amount of lives he touched. So he selflessly served others. He also cares about children and their future the next generation. He always spoke about it. I remember a word. He spoke about the generational blessing. And then that has stayed with me and helped me. He's always mindful of the needy. As I said, he served them and people and, and, and work. When we were in Jamaica, I remember when I took him home and I was trying to show him all the nice parts of Jamaica and so on. The man said to me, all right, Gareth, I see all this, but where are the people who are in need? A conscious always that there is a heart. He reminds me of the Lord Jesus. He represents for me the heart heart of Jesus, that our blessing is about blessing others. I am convinced, and I stand here as a witness today to say that I'm convinced that he endured to the end, that even though he suffered hardship or, or he suffered um, in terms of ill health and so on, that none of those things uh, took his faith away from God. He didn't need to question God as his savior and, or, or his faith, that as a servant, he knew what he was preaching, he believed what he preached and he lived it. As a result, that man has impacted many lives. Many of us here today have been blessed by him. May I encourage you and ask you, will you finish wrong? Will you finish like Pastor Joe? Because today we are celebrating with great assurance that he endured to the end. And now he is joining the, the, the crowd of witnesses and he's cheering us on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That though we miss him here, we know that he's gone, that he's transformed into uh, the likeness of his father, that indeed he's receiving the fullness of the promise. Uh, let's ensure that in our journey and in our time here, that we are making it to the end, enduring to the end. God bless you.